So I want to say that if you asked me last year how I felt about fluoride in municipal water supplies, I would have pounded the desk and said, it is the greatest public health advance in the last 50 years. And people who want to remove it are on the fringe. That's what I would have said last year. But today, I have a different opinion. And here's why. New research changes thinking, and new research should always change thinking. The study that was published in the JAMA Pediatrics in 2019 was an impressive study in a credible peer-reviewed journal. And the data in that study was so contradictory to long-held beliefs that about the medical world and fluoridation that that paper was scrutinized so hard that I actually spoke to the researcher and he told me he had to go through many hoops to get that published. So they really looked at that very vigorously and they found that male children of pregnant moms who drank fluoridated water had drops in IQ scores from three to five points. So you say, Dr. Neary, what's three to five points? Three to five points is a big deal. Three to five points was what Dr. Lampier found in lead, in low levels of lead. And that changed what the CDC recommended about lead. It actually, he made the CDC change the recommendation or his research did. Um, it's impressive. A change of three to five points is significant. Most of us have IQ scores that fall between 85 and 115 points. Only two and a half percent of children have an IQ above 130 which is considered gifted. There are about six million children in this group. On the other end of the distribution, another two and a half percent of children have an IQ below 70, which is considered challenged. The impact of exposure to a toxin like lead causes a five point drop in IQ. This shift results in a 57% increase in the number of children that are challenged from six million to 9.4 million. There is a corresponding decrease in the number of children that are gifted from 6 million to 2.4 million. Little shifts matter. So, and I don't want you to think it was one study that has changed my mind. I read numerous studies, and as numerous people have said, the National Toxicology Program reviewed many, many studies. And so here's the thing that I say to myself now. Am I willing to sacrifice cognitive development for the child's rest of their life to prevent a cavity or two when we have other ways to prevent cavities? And the answer to myself is no. If my daughter said, mom, should I drink fluoridated water? I'm pregnant. I would tell her no. And if she was going to make formula for the zero to six month old baby, I would tell her don't do that. So I'm a pediatrician. I've had firm beliefs for the last, um, I won't say how many years, <laughs> um, but I'll tell you that I'm changing my thinking because I'm not going to sacrifice a brain for a few cavities. And I want you to look at the research carefully. Thank you very much.